Hello, once again, John Dawson. In our series on temptation, today we're looking at the temptation that happens slowly. It's easy to succumb slowly, inch by inch. And this is what happens to King Solomon. You remember that King Solomon began his reign very well and very wisely when God said, what do you want? And he says, I need wisdom to be a good king to these people. And the Lord's response, you've answered well, asked well, you shall get wisdom, and as well I will give you honor and riches. But the honor and the riches and the failure of Solomon to follow God's ways worked against him slowly. Here's the text, 1 Kings 11, verses 1 and 2. But King Solomon loved many foreign women, as well as the daughters of the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians, Hittites, from the nations of whom the Lord had said to the children of Israel, you shall not intermarry, nor they with you. Surely they will turn your hearts after their gods. Solomon clung to these in love. Solomon becomes nose blind to the sin. If you're in a certain smell, pretty soon you can't smell it anymore. It's there, but you don't know it because you don't even recognize it. Uh, there's many examples of this in our own lives as well as in the scripture. And when you see it in the scripture, don't think of yourself as someone stronger than they. For example, are you wiser than Solomon? It happened to him. Are you stronger than Samson? It happened to him. Are you more zealous than King David? No, it happened to him. Take heed lest you fall. You don't know what it's like to have hundreds of wives. That's a good thing. But you do know what disobedience to God over a long stretch of time can do for you. When you defy God, it makes life complicated, and God is patient. Don't let his patience fool you into thinking that he doesn't care about sin. He's just giving opportunity to repent. What happened here with Solomon? He had married foreign wives. Many of these were political, no doubt, but each wife would bring their own God, their own way of, of worship, and that began to fill the city of Jerusalem, and even turned Solomon's heart. It seems that Solomon's heart for God, which was strong in the beginning, shriveled. Even though the Lord spoke to him directly, the Lord gave him wisdom, the Lord gave him honor and riches, he fell away. He did what the people were told not to do. He married foreign women, and as it says, do not intermarry with them or they with you. Surely they will turn your heart after their gods. And that's indeed what happened with Solomon. You know, it doesn't matter what the sin is. If you do it and continue in it long enough, this is the result. Sin becomes normal. And what was unthinkable becomes something not only normal, but your habit. Solomon switches sides. He no longer has allegiance with the Lord and with the Lord alone. And remember, that's the goal of Satan in temptation, to get you to switch sides. Here's Bonhoeffer's quote. Satan plans to make the flesh rebellious towards the spirit. Satan knows that the flesh is afraid of suffering. Have you thought of that? Lack of courage, lack of faithfulness, because you think God's way will be difficult or you'll suffer? Yeah. Look at what the suffering of Christ was for you and the result, which was for your, your salvation. Our suffering in Christ even participates with that, Scripture says. Let's pray. Our Father, show us our sin, that which we are comfortable with, so comfortable that we no longer recognize it as sin, that our conscience no longer is pricked. And help us, Lord, to see and to forsake it. Draw us back to have hearts that are warm to you. 
We pray this in Christ.